You're all going on a journey, a very long journey. Where would we be without computerized navigation? Your sat nav, uh, typing things into Google to find out where you're going. And you may remember back in ye olden days, a bit of software could auto root on the PC, which was amazing. You'd never seen anything like this before. You typed in place names and it just printed out a map and all gave you directions and all sorts of stuff. And it was wonderful. And it was reserved for high powered computers, the expensive things. And it was an expensive bit of software. But in autumn 1994, computerized route planning arrived on the Amstrad CPC with Route Planner by Richard Furhurst, a name known in the CPC community because he was an excellent coder and a technical editor of Amstrad Action at this time. And I'm going to pit Route Planner against Google Maps. There we go. I'm going to load Route Planner in. 83k free on the disk. It means what the code is about 90k, 100k, something like that. About 90k. This is a 128k only bit of software. Costs £19.99. Now we have to select which area we want to emit. And the reason is 128k isn't enough to hold the entire UK inside a CPC. So the, you have to exclude one of the extremities, uh, Scottish Highlands, Wales, or Southwest England. Because if you think about it, if you're driving from Aberdeen to Southampton, then you don't need Wales because you're not going to be going through Wales. And in actual fact, you won't need Southwest England necessarily either. And as this loads in, it's quite remarkable we're going to be doing this on a Amstrad CPC 6128. Uh, it just, it, it's a disc only bit of software, although there was a tape demo, still needed 128K on the cover tape of Amstrad Action, but that only had the motorway network on it, I think. It didn't have uh, A roads and B roads. So here we go. And it's not ice drawing on the screen. No, it is a map, the roadman network of the UK. So it's, obviously it's running on a CPC, right? So, you know, um, it's not going to be highly detailed, but you can do one of two things. You can select a place on a map, which takes forever, or you can just type in place names to and from. You've got some things there, so set speeds. You go on the motorways and the A roads and the B roads and how to do various things and print out your data and how the times are going to be displayed. And the software doesn't pause when it's drawing the map, thank goodness, or you'd be going on forever. So we're going to go from Guildford get that in, click on, type it in there, click on from, and we're then going to go to Exeter. A nice simple journey. Bearing in mind that this is 1994, so for example the A331 is not going to be there, but it should be vaguely correct compared to modern terms. So I've pressed uh, find the fastest route and now it's calculating and this is going to take a little while because it's a z80 running at three and a half megahertz it's not going to do it in a few seconds so we've got a little wait and i'm not going to edit this and you're going to say how does the cpc do this well it does it with an algorithm called a star which and i'm reading this from wikipedia because i don't understand it is a graph traversal and path search algorithm um, which is often used in many fields of computer science due to its completeness but it's found it it has found us a route and it is now drawing the map of where that route is. It will take a little while. So yeah, it was an algorithm first invented in 1968. There you go, got a map there. That's that's definitely going from Guildford to Exeter. And can we zoom in on that map? Can we select something? How does it work? We can always oh, recentering the map. There. Z80 is probably melting at this stage. We can zoom in and we can see more detail. I mean, you'll probably look at this and laughing down your sleeve, but this is, this is actually seriously impressive in that it's done in about 90k on a 3.5 megahertz 8 bit in 128k, you know, within the constraints of running the entire thing in 128k of RAM. So we can zoom in a bit more. It should have all motorways, all A roads, and 
uh, a selection of important B roads, presumably due to memory. So it says, yep, yeah, as you can see the map of the UK there, or the south. So I can see the A31 there, down by the M3. If you're going southerly route, but no, that's what, that's the A303 there. And there it is. There is the instructions. So you basically got one AR44 on the A303. So you're going to have to go up to the A287 in Farnham, which would make sense because um, the A331 has not been built yet. So I can't blame it for that. You're going to go up to Odium uh, and basically join the M3, then go straight down uh, the A303. So let's try this on Google. And yeah, okay, look, there's the A331 going up there because that now exists. And Google did this in about three seconds. Probably quicker, but that's how long it took on my internet connection. And yeah, all nice. and got the alternate routes there. And yeah, this is how it is today. It's vastly different, isn't it? This would have blown your mind in 1994. Mind you, auto route would have blown my mind in 1994. And we get the instructions there. A bit more detail than on the CPC, things like roundabouts, take first exit, and so on. And the, oh, look, there, yeah, see, Countess roundabout parts of this road may be closed at certain times of day. Clearly, Google have got huge resources. This is how things are today. But on the CPC, yes, it does show that route. It does tell you which roads to go on. The basic information is there. I'm just going to drag this across to get you through Odium there. There you go. That's how um, so it did that pretty much instantaneously there. That's how it would have been routed, minus any other bits that have changed on the Amstrad. So let's put another route into Google. Let's go from Glasgow to Dover, because we want to test the CPC out, don't we? So a few seconds. Yeah, that's a two seconds. And there's our route, all seven hours and 50 minutes of it. Now let's try that on the CPC. Go from Dover to Glasgow. There we go. Go up and click. There you go. Right. Go up, click fastest there. Oh, you can adjust the speed you expect to travel on any of the roads on the CPC here as well. So if you want, because, you know, your average speed may vary. And you can also very cleverly, you can, for example, exclude motorways by telling Route Finder that motorways go at, say, 20 miles an hour. So they'll be the slowest road. So Route Planner will just avoid them. So imagine this is going to take quite a while. Yeah, I mean, I, I asked uh, Richard Fairhurst about a route planner and he said, yeah, it's a star, the A-star algorithm. It's a more efficient refinement of Gextra. I'm going to say Gextra. Gextra. It's not so much the algorithm that's a challenge on a constrained system like the CPC, more of how you deal with the priority queues. And the version you're looking at here is version two of the software. I was using version one the other night, which is much, much slower much slower. In fact, I gave up um, waiting for it to calculate this route after about 20 minutes. I thought it's never going to get there. Um, but no, this is version two. And hopefully by the time you see this, version two will be available to download on CPC Power because I've alerted them to the fact that they don't have this newer, faster version. So hopefully that'll be on there. If not, if you want to try it, it is on archive.org. And thanks to Richard Fairhurst for pointing that out to me. And it's still going. I'm hoping it's going to do this because, as I say, I gave up on version one trying to get that to uh, go from Dover to Glasgow, but it's quite a long route. Hopefully, it's going to be there in a minute. The Google map said, what, seven hours 50 on the modern kind of motorway network? It's still doing it. It's still doing it up. Oh, there we go. It's seven hours 35. Where is it going to send us? Because it doesn't know about things like traffic, does it? So it's just going to know. Look, 
Yes, there's the problem. It's routed me straight through London. You can see the M25 there. And because it can't take account of traffic, it just assumes going straight through London. Yeah, there we go. Hyde Park Corner. Oh, oh. A40, yeah. Um, A2 Junction, uh, yeah. No, 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 no. I mean, look, it's saying how long it's going to take on those. Yeah, you can whiz through London that fast. Honest. That, that's going to be the problem with this, that it will just go for the fastest or the shortest route, uh, whichever one you select, with no consideration for traffic. Um, the fact that you can't just drive through the centre of London and whiz through there, even in the middle of the night. Frankly, there's the M25. I've zoomed in. It's all there. This must have been such a a huge project for one person to do because it's doing all this drawing. Oh, look, we're getting, we're getting names as well. Now we've got M40 Junction. I can't read it. Um, M40, M40 Junction 1. Can, is that there? M3 Junction 4. Oh, he's had to draw all this. And yeah, it's not fantastic detail, but it's like... Ice drawing, ice forming on a window. There you go. Straight through the centre of London. Actually, not the very centre, but yeah, St Albans, Amersham, Aylesbury. Is that Woking down there? I mean, on the technical level, this is marvellous. On a, on a functional level, yes, some... Um, if you didn't have a friend with auto route who could do this stuff for you, perhaps it might be useful. Um, or if you can't read a map, that's it, isn't it? You use Google because it's easy and because you can actually scroll around a map really quickly. Whereas I always had a road atlas in my car. Um, I'm sure you guys did as well because you had to. You always had a road atlas in your car to find out where you were trying to work out stuff because there was no other option before, or well, at least before sat-navs came along, what, when I get mine, 2005? My first Tom Tom. Look, zooming in more. Greenwich, Woolwich, Kingston upon Thames, Croydon, Tottenham, Holloway, Camden. I mean, he's had to draw out an entire map of the UK with the road network and the place names on it. And that in itself is remarkable. And as I say, you can zoom in and um, go from place to place on the map if you want rather than type place names in. Just on Google Maps, just trying to work out which way it was trying to send me. So it's saying that would be at eight, about nine hours, basically, if you want to charge through London. I'm going to do one more route, and let's do a challenging one. So let's go from Aberystwyth to Margate. That should be nice and complex. That's uh, cutting across the country. Now, it's hugely impressive this exists. I don't. Does anything like this exist for the C64 and Spectrum? I can't imagine it does, let alone the, the fact this exists for the CPC is because there's a user base that would potentially use it, the hobbyist users who weren't letting go of their CPCs. So they would buy this. Um, but as I say, it's 1994, and really it's the time of the 486 PC and a copy of Auto Root, but expensive. I've probably cut about 90 seconds out there because I couldn't think of anything to say while it was doing it. But it's drawing a map from Aberystwyth to Margate. Down to Margate. Actually, I'll put some reverb on. Down to Margate. And, uh, yeah, there we are. 5 hours and 19 on the fastest route, not the shortest. I'll just let it draw it. Sometimes it puts a squiggle around the outside to denote the outline of the UK, and sometimes it doesn't. I have to say, I don't think on version 2 I've seen it do it. On version 1 it would. I've seen it do it, but it was sporadic and didn't always happen. Of course, to go from Aberystwyth to Margate, Margate I've had to reload the software in to include Wales, because I didn't have that in before for my other routes. But, uh, yeah, so we are... With that. Right, there's our journey. That's complex. That's a complex journey. But it's got all your junctions there. Tell you where A458 junction. And you've been on that, you've only been on that road for 
50 minutes, then the A5 junction for 14 minutes. Doesn't tell you the miles you're going to be on that road. But again, I imagine that's memory. But it's, wor it's worked out a route, but it's taken me straight through London again, High Park Corner. But yes, there we are on Google Maps. And well, there's a couple of ways down. You can do it. Um, not much between all of them, actually. There's another route by the M4 there. And oh, look, one of the alternate routes is by friends of the channel who make the Chinny Vision mugs for us. There we go. Any mugs in the window? Yay, there's some, not our mugs, but uh, there's some other mugs in the window there. So that was Route Planner on the Amstrad CPC, a remarkable technical feat. There's no other way to put it. Yes, you kind of ask yourself why it exists and who would be buying it in 1994, and the answer to that is hobbyist CPC users. And I hope Richard got remunerated well enough for his time, because this must have taken ages. It is a huge, Herculean task just to put all that data into the CPC and get all those maps done. So I, I honestly really hope it was worth his while. It's hugely impressive. It exists. I'm really, really pleased it existed. But in all honesty, if you, if you didn't own a PC, surely you would have had a mate with a copy of Autoroute who could print out maps for you, because we certainly did. But hey, isn't it wonderful? Route Planner exists at all.